In this presentation, we will take a look at our S-Corporation Comprehensive Problem Part 1, where we will be reviewing the data that we'll be using to create the S-Corporation tax return, the 1120S. Here is the Form 1120S. We will be working this with software, Lacert software, Intuit being the owner, the owner of QuickBook being Intuit as well. We will be looking at the forms, however, so you could enter this with just the data input into the forms if you so choose. We're also going to have an Excel worksheet. So we're going to be putting this into an Excel worksheet, whether you have software or not. Often very helpful, especially for more complicated uh, S-Corporation problems. But really for any problem that is an S-Corporation, any type of organization that's set up as an S-Corporation, probably worth the time to put it into some kind of worksheet such as this in Excel. If you're working at uh, some type of CPA firm or accounting firm or tax preparation firm, then they might have other software to enter this information into. I've used other different types of softwares and there's pros and cons to them. It might be a little bit easier to enter the data into other types of software and whatnot. However, Excel's probably the most transparent or it is for me the most transparent type of software that we have. So when you want to just look at the data, enter the data and make adjustments to it like an adjusting journal entries or tax entries so they can, you can see them in a transparent way, Excel's the best tool in my opinion. If you have access to the resources, then we're going to have the problem here. We'll have the open items list. We'll have a list of forms, which you can also find on the IRS website. So if you want to follow along and enter the data into the actual form 1120S, you can use these forms or you can go to the IRS website at irs.gov and find these forms, including the 1120S. Back to our Excel worksheet. The Excel worksheet is typically where we're going to start off. So once we get the information from the client, unless it's a really easy type of return that we're just going to go right into the, to the software and enter it right into the software, right into the 1120, we're probably first going to say, hey, let's put it into the, the tax software. Let's make any adjustments. Uh, let's put it into the Excel before we put it into the tax software and make any adjustments that we need to have. So that's going to be the process we'll have here. Now we're going to be using a worksheet that I'm not going to spend a lot of time on on how to build a worksheet such as this. If this is something that you'd want to see on a step by step process, how to build this worksheet, I actually have a course on that. So if you want to see that course, it's basically on building uh, this Excel worksheet. If you work at other types of CPA firms, they might use slightly different uh, type of formats. What you want to do when you work at a, a CPA firm is use whatever they give you and try to try to understand the system that is set up uh, within the system. But then you got to branch out so that you understand, you know, how to input the data. A lot of systems might use a lot of shortcuts and whatnot. And for you to fully understand it, you might need to, you know, branch out a bit and input your own. So you got to find some balance <laughs> when you're working at, at different places and different types of organizations. So what are we going to need from the client? If we're talking about an S corporation, then of course the main thing we're going to need are, are going to be the financial statements. So if you're working at, at a CPA firm, if it's a continuing client or an accounting firm or a tax firm, then you would expect that they would give you the financial statements and we would possibly have all the prior information in the system for the most part because they're a continuing S corporation. So if there's no changes to things like uh, the number of shareholders and whatnot, it's pretty straightforward in terms of, of the uh, that type of permanent information that would be more like permanent information, and then we can take the financial statements and start to think about inputting that into the system. If it's going to be a new client, a new client to us uh, that has been continuing over time, then of course we want the, the tax return of the last year. If we can get that, we'd want to put that into the LACERT program uh, or whatever tax program in the prior year. The, the S corporations are fairly uh, more complex. It would be nice then to do it as, as well as possible to put the prior year tax return into our tax software system in the prior year and then roll it forward. That'll make it a lot easier in, in case there's any kind of roll forwards or, or that kind of thing. And it might make it easier for the calculation of the basis adjustments as well. If it's a new S corporation altogether, then of course we'll set up the, the new corporation in uh, the current year as we set up the new organization. So what we're going to need then, if in, in the in interview process, you're obviously going to want to have the financial statements. You're going to, you're going to want to figure out, hey, do, do they need bookkeeping services versus basically tax preparation? In other words, is there going to be a lot of things that need to happen in order to get these books up to par to enter into the tax return? Or are they going to pretty much be set up, the bookkeeping done, and now we can take those that information without having to do a lot of adjustments to it and just simply enter it in, into the tax return? So you want to get get that settled down as well 
And you also want to think about, well, how are they going to give us the information? If they have something like QuickBooks or something like that, that we can get access to, then that might be easier to be working with because then we can actually print the financial statements that we need and we can go into any of the detail if we have questions within them, especially if it's a situation where we might need to be making adjustments uh, or, or think about the, the adjusting journal entries process within the bookkeeping process. So we're going to have the financial statements. Here's going to be our financial statements here. We got the current year and the prior year for the balance sheet. Now, obviously, they probably wouldn't give it to us in Excel, but I want to put everything on one page here. We're going to use this page uh, for the data, which is going to be on the left. Then we'll use that data to into into our system, which will be on the right. So we've got our balance sheet. We've got our income statement. That's going to be the bare minimum that we're going to need for uh, entering the S corporation. We'll typically need those items then added resources we'll have down below and we're going to want to ask of course for some of these added resources many of these things we might be able to get from the prior year tax return if they did have a prior year tax return in the prior year if they're a new company we're going to need this data so calculate and record both book and tax depreciation we're going to actually calculate the, the depreciation and this is something that uh Many, many people are dependent on the actual tax software to calculate the depreciation. So the client then we're going to say the client's going to give us the, the information for any purchases that they made. We'll put it into the system. We'll do an adjusting entry. That means we're going to do an adjusting entry to their books in that case and record the tax depreciation and book depreciation. So we'll talk about that. Uh, and then we have the date formed. We're going to need to know when they formed the organization. We're going to need the owner information and at the bare minimum, the, the breakout uh, of the ownership, 7030 in this case for Tim Jones and James Smith. The address, we're going to need the address and a lot of the documentation we might have for the S Corporation may have the address, but we want to verify that. The employer ID number, the EIN no number, employer identification number. This is similar to the social security number for an individual. We're going to need that. The accounting basis, are they using accrual, an accrual or cash basis? And then uh, interest income, we're going to, we're going to, this is going to be a breakout of some of the things that we probably may have questions with as we go through the return. And we'll talk more about these items as, as we go. So that will include interest income. If there's dividend income, we're going to have a question about that. If the officer's wages, you know, how much was the officer paid? by the s corporation you'll recall that the the s corporation has the share the shareholders may be actually working for the s the s corporation and therefore they should receive w-2 income the, the irs wants them to have some w-2 income that's reasonable because they want to make sure that these people are paying social security and medicare the fica taxes so typically for an s corporation a small s corporation oftentimes the owners of the s corporation will be working uh, for the corporation and they will be needing to pay themselves something because the IRS want, you know, wants them if they're generating revenue to earn wages so that they're paying Social Security and Medicare. And then we have the amount uh, of accounts receivable recorded as uncollectible. So this is going to deal with the allowance for doubtful accounts. Then we have distributions to the shareholders. So this is the money that came out kind of like a draw for a sole proprietorship. And then we have the cost of goods sold calculation and the basis we're going to need the basis for the beginning of the year if it's a new tax return we need not only the 1120s but we need to know the basis calculation if we're going to help the uh, owners to calculate their basis going forward and most people are dependent on their tax and prepared to help help them with their basis calculation so the the bare minimum we're going to need is up top we're going to need these the financial statements much of those numbers data once we start entering it into the tax return we'll probably come up with and if we have the software like QuickBooks or something, we can then go dig in and find that information. If not, we want to have our open items list. We're going to have our open items list here. And we're just going to jot down anything that comes to mind as I enter the data, as we enter the data. We're going to just jot down here and then go back into our open items list at the end. Ask any questions that we need to ask or review anything. Uh, ask our supervisor, any professional research, any kind of research that we need to do. I'm just going to jot that down as we go. And I'm going to do it kind of, kind of in, a, in a quick fashion as we go so, it, so I know what it means for my own notes, obviously. And then when I present those notes, if I can't answer something, I'll present those notes in a cleaner fashion when I contact the client either by phone or email or if I'm going to you know, contact a professional, a supervisor, some kind of professional if I, if I need uh, assistance in terms of the tax law or what to do in, in a certain situation. So I'll go ahead and write down and, and jot down 
these open items and that's what i suggest doing you might you might prefer having that on a piece of paper by your desk as you're entering and just when when you have a question just put it down and keep pushing forward uh, as you move forward now we're going to enter this information into the right in our worksheet this is the first thing we're going to do again there's a i have a course and if you want to just step by step learn how to i would build a worksheet such as this but uh, here we're going to have the, the worksheet set up for us and then we're just going to go through it and enter the data so we're going to have any adjusting entries on the left and then we're going to enter the data into basically our our information on the right what we're going to typically do is we'll take our our uh, financial statements i'm going to convert them back if i couldn't get a trial balance if we can get a trial balance from like uh, quickbooks i would get that but if we can't get that and all we have the financial statements which sometimes is the case we'll take the financial statements convert it back into a trial balance a plus and minus trial balance and then i'll just list the, the trial balance here and then what we'll do is if if we're doing any kind of a year-end adjustments which is often something that that a, that a tax firm or accounting firm might do for a client if you're if you're depending on if you're the client is saying hey i'm dependent on you to do some of these adjustments such as the depreciation then we'll have the adjustments that we'll make that will basically be bookkeeping adjustments to to make the financial statements correct uh f basically from from a financial statement or bookkeeping or accrual type basis and that'll give us our adjusted trial balance now again if you're talking about a company that's basically you know self-sufficient on the bookkeeping and you're just saying hey i'm just doing the tax preparation and that is it and i'm not doing any adjusting entries then then you would just start at this point however again it might be the case that you that someone's you know is reliant to some degree to for some adjusting entries if it's a small uh s corporation things like the calculation of the uh depreciation uh they might be dependent on you know properly breaking out the loan interest and and this kind of thing so so you might have some adjusting entries that you'll need to do and then we'll have the tax, um, the adjusted trial balance, which will basically be our financial statement uh, trial balance. And then we're going to enter our tax entries. So these are things where the financial statements will differ from the books. And oftentimes this will, this will result in things, this difference will be reported on the tax return on the K-1 items and the M-1 items. So these are the things that we'll kind of track if we look at the tax return. Here's basically the end result tax return that we'll be building and if I scroll down, you'll note that at the bottom of the first page, you see that we have 74,408 as the basically net income, the ordinary business income. And you'll also see if I go then to page two, we're going to scroll down and say that we have, uh, that's the starting point of the schedule K, the 74,408. If I go to the end of the schedule K, then we have another number down here that, which is basically income loss reconciliation of the 84,408. And then if I go down to the page five, we have an M1 reconciliation where we have the 75510 and reconciled to the 84408. So we're going to have to kind of deal this. This is a little bit confusing that the S corporation is going to break out. We've got these schedule one type of adjustments. We got the M1 adjustments. And what's really happening here is we're breaking out this information uh, that's going to be on the books from the taxes. And we want to be able to put this in our worksheet. Let's take a look at the end result worksheet here in such a way that we can we can adjust for this. So then, so we want to be able to reconcile these items. So this is the book balance here. If I added up all the all the income statement items, that would be the book income. The page one of the tax return is then adjusted to the 74408. And you can see how this is being calculated. We'll talk about how to how to calculate this out. That 74408, however, should be at the end result of the 1120 page one. Here's the 1120S page 174408 then if we go to page two and we go to page three this is an information page we see that the 74408 is the first line on the schedule k and that's coming from page one line 21 and then we have the adjustments and so these are going to be the reconciling kind of items if i then go to page four then we have the reconciled item of the 84408 so we'd like to be able to tie that out on our worksheet here as we do here here's the 84408 so we'll discuss how to how to basically come up with these reconciling items as we make the worksheet and then if i go back to the forms and we scroll down here's the basically the balance sheet which is going to be the schedule l balance sheet and then we're going to have the m1 and you'll note that the m1 adjustments up top have the 75510 and that's going to be the 75510 that's our beginning book balance and that reconciles out to the 
408. So that's the 84 408 reconciliation out here. So we, what we would like to have is a, is a worksheet that basically breaks that out uh, and, and allows us to tie into basically those three, those different three different uh, net income numbers, which are a result of items that are going to be recorded as adjustments for the tax return, either basically on the on the K-1s and uh, the M-1s. So we'll discuss that as we go through this worksheet.